I wrote a script that disguises virtual machines from malware. I'm giving it away for free, I'm showing you how to use it, and I'm telling you why this is important. Believe it or not, virtual machines are not just a computer within a computer. Under the hood, there are many things that happen differently with a virtual machine than they do with a real machine. Malware can and often does detect these differences, and if you want to see if your favorite program from this subreddit is doing anything weird, if you don't have a disguised virtual machine, you're going to get a completely different picture. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I have my VirtualBox Windows 10 VM here. I haven't done anything to this machine yet other than just make sure it hasn't had access to the internet and installed a few tools that we're going to be using later. And right now, this screens virtual machine. Everything from the resolution to the register keys to the devices and device manager, hardware that it thinks it has, etc. Go ahead and take a look at device manager here. First thing you're going to see, disk drives, VBox hard disk, dead giveaway. You can't easily rename this from here, but you can take care of it in the registry, which we'll do later. You might also have another thing that says CD-ROM VBox. I went ahead and dismounted that prior to making this video. You should do the same because you're not going to be installing guest editions on this anyway. Another thing also, don't install guest editions. That will mess everything up and it will make your VM look even more like a virtual machine. We also have the registry. Now bear with me here. This is where we're going to check. We're going to check H key, local machine, hardware, description, and then we're going to click system. And looking at this, you might think that there are just two identifiers, but there are actually three. This one also is an identifier because every virtual box machine without being configured has this bio state set in 1999. Programs know this, like Al, I don't know how to pronounce that. Al Khasar. Anyway, programs know that, so we're going to check for this state. And if they see this, then they're going to know that it's a virtual machine. Pretty much definitively. Again, dead giveaway. Not to mention you also have VBox and the BIOS version. Anyway, this goes deeper than the registry because the registry is just what we see from the stuff that the kernel is doing. And this is where it stores all its files before it goes into memory. So if we want to go at an even deeper level than this, we're going to have to use the command line. This command right here is going to return a table of the manufacturer and the product of the baseboard that this virtual machine thinks it has. As you can see, very obviously VirtualBox. Same thing with this command. Let's try it out. As you can see, definitely VirtualBox. That was its first company. Painfully obvious. Anyway, we don't have to check this manually. We can use a tool like Alcacer, Alcacelzer, and we can see what's going on. But go ahead and run with admin. Yes. And we're going to let this run for a little bit. All right, I know this is a lot to look at, but basically everything good means that this wasn't detected, and then obviously bad means that it did detect that this was running in either a virtual machine, debug environment, you know, a sandbox. It also looks for stuff specific to VirtualBox, VMware, Kimu, etc. And as you can see, it's not looking too good. We're not going to be able to take care of all these, but I'm going to go ahead and cancel this with Control C, and I'm going to look at the log that this generated. I'm going to go ahead and count the number of detections that it found. 44. All right, so that's not great because a lot of these are very obvious. You can also see that a lot of these include stuff like checks for specific usernames, IT admin, Peter Wilson, Sandbox, Malware, Maltest, etc. You also see MAC addresses and lots of other things that we're going to be taking care of, at least for the most part. Anyway, keep that in mind. We have 42 detections so far. Let's see what we can do about that. Anyway, powering off my virtual machine, we're going to do a few things first to make sure it won't get detected as easily. First off, make sure you have at least 4 gigs of memory. That is the bare minimum. One of the biggest hallmarks of a virtual machine, being a virtual machine, is that it has practically no resources. Also, allocate at least 4 cores. Make sure you have at least 100 gigabytes of storage. No less than that, otherwise it'll get detected. I went ahead and disabled internet, but I have a host-only adapter set up on a custom adapter. VBox Net 1. Now, you might see VBox Net 0 or nothing here at all. And then this MAC address part is the problem. We're going to have the script change that. These first three bytes, 080027, are specific to VirtualBox. That's its prefix. Other companies have other prefixes, Intel, Dell, Asus, etc. So this is something we're going to have to change. Also a dead giveaway. Anyway, as for changing the host-only adapter, I'm going to tell you why that's a problem. If we hit Control h and bring up the Network tab, you can see VBox Net 0, which if we take a look at this subnet here, 56 is the default subnet that VirtualBox will provide. Again, also a pretty easy tell. So all I did was hit the Create button, created a new one, and it went ahead and bumped the subnet up to 57, which is a lot less obvious. Anyway, our approach is going to evolve two scripts, and I'm going to explain to you why we did it this way. In a typical computer setup, you have the operating system, and you have the hardware. The operating system would see what hardware it has because of the kernel, which sends all the information over. The operating system would then send it to the registry and the file system, and the registry would send it to stuff like the device manager and so on. So where do virtual machines come in here? Well, virtual machines have partitioned sections of the host's hardware. So it gets to control what the operating system sees. So it can inject whatever data it wants. And a side effect of the registry is that many of its values and keys and properties are read from the kernel. 
A lot of the keys are used to run processes where the names and the paths are dependent on each other so you can't safely change things. And the things you can change go back to how they were every boot cycle, unless you change the hardware. Luckily, VirtualBox gives us the VBox Manage command, which takes care of quite a bit. That leaves us less cleanup to do in the registry and the file systems and the device manager, etc. And that means we have one script for the hardware and the other script for everything else. By the way, I wrote this one. This one already existed. So this script that I wrote takes care of the hardware stuff. In other words, with the operating system things that it has to work with. Let's run it. We're going to open the terminal in this folder. We're going to type period for slash vbox stealth and then the name of your virtual machine. We're going to hit enter. And as you can see, a lot of stuff just happened. What is that? First off, since we didn't specify a preset, it picked Dell. It set the date configure a bunch of other stuff. This just means we'll have to manually clean up the files and the registry. This is all the registry does in this case is just add new files. So we can remove these because it's using something else. Took care of the hypervisor flag, which is basically a value that says, am I a virtual machine? Yes or no. Made CPU operations dependent on something else. Changed the MAC address without the prefix. And here's what we have to do next. So if we go into VirtualBox, we can see what it changed. Anyway, now that we're back in our virtual machine, we can go ahead and check CMD and run the commands that we ran last time. As you can see, no virtual box in sight. Let's try this one. Nothing. Okay, that looks good, but what about the registry? Let's take a look. Okay, it looks like one of the three things changed. What happened? Well, it looks like this got read from the kernel and changed before we could do anything. And this is the graphics controller, which in order for you to change would require GPU pass-through, which you can't do with VirtualBox. That's something that Kimu supports. But if we go to Device Manager, we can see that the disk drive got renamed. And there's nothing else here that's immediately obvious that this is a virtual machine. But that's not everything. And even though we're not going to get to everything, we need to get as close as we can get. That's where this script comes in. Anyway, credit to this guy right here. He saved me a lot of time. It'll look for processes that are associated with guest editions, which we don't have. This is VMware processes. Looks like he wrote this for VMware too. Let's change that. Not like it matters. This is the one that hasn't been changed yet. So it's in a list of properties to modify in the registry. We also have a bunch of other stuff that the script didn't cover. And it will basically take each one of the properties and keys and then scramble their names because they're all put in memory. And if anything queries the registry directly, they're not going to see anything. So I'm going to open a PowerShell. I'm going to hit Control Shift Enter. Open it as admin. I'm going to change directory to the desktop top because otherwise we won't be able to call this. In my case, it's this path right here. You would change this to whatever your username is, as you can see. And now we're going to type this command. And the reason we do this is because PowerShell won't natively execute unsigned scripts. And since this is a virtual machine, we don't really care what it runs. So I'm just going to set this to unrestricted. Hit enter, hit A, and now we can run the script. I'm going to type in period backslash V and then tab to complete it. And then we're going to supply the option all. Enter. And as you can see, it got straight to work. Don't worry about this. It just means that it didn't find anything and it went straight along. Now let's take a look and see what this did. If we take a look back in the registry, you can see that all of these keys got scrambled now. So unless malware knew that it was going to find some highly random strings, it would query these, not see the word VBox or VirtualBox or Oracle, and think, okay, this is an actual machine based on this alone. Now there are other identifiers, like this one, which I didn't go over earlier, but this said VBox with two underscores. It got scrambled. This one, it looks like our script got to first. Same with this. And this one looks like it didn't get. Let's go ahead and change it, see if that does something. All right, cool. So that's taken care of. I just went ahead and renamed this because this gets stored in memory. As you can see, it set the BIOS release date to what we put in the program and mount the 1999 version. And there's a lot of stuff, which is good, but we can't get everything. There are still timing attacks and quirks with how the CPU executes stuff that programs like Alka-Seltzer here can detect. Not to mention, there's also a register key that we can't change because it is actively being loaded. And VirtualBox also won't let you change it for legal reasons. And the way to get there, we have to go to System, Control Set, Enum, and then PCI. These three keys are all VirtualBox identifiers. You may not be able to see it, but let me show you exactly why. Everything after Ven is a vendor ID, and everything after Dev is a device ID. The IDs consist of two bytes, and they are specific to vendors. Intel, Dell, AMD, Asus, Lenovo, etc. So VirtualBox can't change its vendor ID because it would be breaking the law. And for the device IDs, malware could just query for the existence of this vendor ID or this device ID. Cafe beef. The only real solution to this is to compile VirtualBox from source and change these. I don't know how to do that. If you guys want to tell me how to do that, that'd be awesome. But I looked at the source code and I'm not going to lie to you. I had no idea what was going on. So I guess, yeah, if you're a malware dev, uh, this is what you would check pretty definitively to see if you have VirtualBox. But every vendor, every hypervisor has his own devices that have their own vendor IDs. So I'm sure you could find a list of them and then query for those directly. In any event, the links to the scripts will be in the description. I hope you get some use out of this and obviously educational purposes only.